Welcome as we present the Catholic Mass from historic St. John Galbert Cathedral in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. The Mass telecast is a production of the St. John Galbert Proclaim Television Ministry. Good morning. Welcome to this liturgy celebrating the solemnity of Corpus Christi. Our readings can be found at number 925. The Mass parts will be from the Heritage Mass. Please stand and join in singing our entrance song, number 838, O Sacrament Most Holy, number 838. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brethren, as we come together to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our own sinfulness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, so that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who live and reign with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Remember how for 40 years now the Lord your God has directed all your journeying in the desert so as to test you by affliction and find out whether or not it was your intention to keep his commandments. He therefore let you be afflicted with hunger and then fed you with manna, a food unknown to you and your fathers in order to show you that not by bread alone does one live, but by every word that comes forth from the mouth of the Lord. Do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery, who guided you through vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and scorpions, its parched and waterless ground, who brought forth water from, for you from the flinty rock and fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. The word of the Lord. the Lord Jerusalem. Alleluia. Praise the Lord Jerusalem. Alleluia. Glorify the Lord of Jerusalem. Praise your God. Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord. granted peace in your borders with the best of wheat he fills you he sends forth his command to the earth swiftly runs his word praise the lord to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nation. His ordinances he has not made known to them. Alleluia. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the cup of blessing that we bless, 
Is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The word of the Lord. Please join in our sequence at number 453, Loud O Zion, 453. The Lord be with you. With Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. To Jesus said to the Jewish crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father. So also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord.
I don't know if we realize, but this weekend we celebrate a very special anniversary. It was three years ago in March that was the great lockdown of 2020 when they said, don't worry, we're only going to be down for about two weeks. And we all know how that went. And yet this weekend, three years ago, was the weekend when they opened up the churches again and we were able to come to Mass again. Yes, there were limits and social distancing and we all had masks on, but things were finally open. And I remember at that moment when people started to come, I heard so many people say to me, I never realized how much I missed receiving Jesus. And I think more than any other time in my life, having been separated from it for three months as a whole world, we came to re realize again, when we came to receive Jesus again and come into the churches again, that gift that we had so often taken for granted, that I don't think we really grasp just how precious it was until we found ourselves without it. And over the years, I've been blessed to walk with many people who have been away from the church and found themselves set right with the faith, having been away for many years. And it's incredible to see that person who's been away from the church come to communion for the first time, or that person who's been in an invalid marriage and finally finished their annulment, celebrated their wedding in the church, and now they're able to receive Jesus for the first time again. Or to see someone who's walked through the RCIA process, learning about the faith, preparing, until finally at the Easter Vigil, they're able to receive our Lord. And in so many ways, it's almost overwhelming. Realizing the reality of what's before us that having had to wait and not having it, we recognize just how important it really is. And it's not uncommon in those moments for any to even see tears of how overwhelmed the person was with the emotion of that moment. The reality that that thing that looks like bread and wine, that looks like a little bit of liquid and a small cracker, really does become the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's what we celebrate today on this, the Feast of Corpus Christi. And nowhere, I think, is that summed up better than the miracle that got this feast day started 760 years ago this year. In the year 1263, in a little town in Prague, there was a German priest by the name of Peter. And Peter looked around at his congregation and he felt like his world was falling apart. He complained about his people, how he said he looked at the people of his congregation and it felt like they were just going through the motions. They were apathetic about the faith. He didn't know, think they really even believed this stuff. And he looked at his other clergy and he said they didn't seem on fire for their faith either. And they didn't seem to get it. And even Peter himself found himself standing there at Mass, staring at the host, and wondering to himself, did we just make this all up? Did Jesus really become present like he said at Mass, or is this just a bunch of hooey? He knew what the church taught, that the host and wine become the body and blood of Jesus, and he's truly present in the Eucharist, but he couldn't help but look at that host in his hands and think, but what if they're wrong? What if it's just a piece of bread? What if it's just a little cracker and a little drink? And this whole thing has been made up. And we're just carrying on a lie that's been passed on to us and passed on to us and passed on to us. And Father Peter realized that with these doubts he was having, if he was going to continue seriously as a priest, he was going to have to take this seriously. And so he resolved that he needed to figure this out. And after some prayer and reflection, he thought, 
the best course of action would be to make a pilgrimage to Rome. He would go and he would see all the grandeur of the church. He would see the places where the early Christians were martyred and see all those that gave their life for this faith and think maybe somehow that would restore his faith. And so he spent some time and prayed, asking God to increase his faith, and he began his trip from Prague to Rome. And on the way, in each town he would visit, he would stop by the church, have mass, and say a few prayers. And on his way, he got as far as northern Italy, where he visited a church on the tomb of St. Christina, one of the early Christian martyrs. And that day, as he was saying mass on the church built on the shrine over her grave, as he had done thousands of times before, he lifted up the host at the words of consecration, just as he had done at every mass. But that time, as he was lifting up the host, he noticed a little red spot appeared in the center of the host. And soon that little red spot started to grow until he realized it was dripping off the host he was holding and all over the corporal and all over the altar. And pretty soon it was all over his hands and all over everywhere. And Peter did what any of us would do in that moment. He panicked. And he started frantically grabbing all the cloths and towels and linens and anything he could to try to wrap up and wipe up all this stuff off of his hands until he slowly realized what this stuff was. It was blood. And at that moment, he was awestruck. He had prayed for a miracle. And here it was, right in front of him. And the feeling was so overwhelming, he could feel the tears streaming down his face. And after a moment, he composed himself and turned around to the people. And you have to remember, in those days, Mass would have been celebrated facing the wall. So as far as anyone in the congregation knew, they hadn't seen any of this, and they just saw the priest saying his private prayers before the altar. And so imagine their shock when he turns around and the front of his vestments and all of the linens and everything is completely covered in blood as he turns around to face the people. And after a gasp, he slowly explained to the people just what had happened, that the host had started bleeding in front of him. And the people all implored him. They said, we're not that far from Rome. We have to take this and show this to the Holy Father. It's a miracle. And so they did as best they could and wrapped all of the stuff up in a big linen cloth. And along with the people, they went down to Rome to see Pope Urban IV. And as they went in, and I always like to picture what this scene would have looked like as they walked in, as this priest who's completely covered in blood and this hundred people behind him storm into the Pope's chamber saying, Holy Father, Holy Father, you've got to see this. And I picture the Pope looking and going, who are these crazy people? Until he saw what was going on. And they explained the story of what had happened. And immediately on hearing the story, Pope Urban ordered an investigation into what really happened. And he called in all the experts from Rome, and they looked at it, and they determined that red stuff, it really was blood. And that host had indeed started to bleed in the middle of the Mass. And the Pope immediately recognized it was a miracle and declared a miracle. And he declared that the host and corporal and those relics should be taken to the cathedral in the little town of Orvieto, not far from where the event had happened, where they're still enshrined today. And the Pope decreed that one year later, on the anniversary of that day, there would be a new feast day in the church. And the new feast day would be dedicated to the Blessed Sacrament. It would be called the Feast of Corpus Christi, the feast of the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And in honor of that feast day, Pope Urban said, well, we should commission some new hymns to go along with this new feast day in light of this miracle. And so he called in two of the scholars that taught at the local universities, a guy by the name of Bonaventure and a guy by the name of Thomas 
Aquinas. You might have heard of him somewhere. And he said to them he wanted them to compose a set of new hymns for this feast day. And both saints got to work immediately. And when they finished, Pope Roman called them each both in to present their new hymns. And Thomas Aquinas went first. And he read off and he said, I couldn't contain it to just one hymn, so I wrote four. And the work, hymns he wrote off that, read off that day were called Panis Angelicus, Pange Lingua, Adoro Te Devote, and O Salutaris Hostia. And after reading the words of those hymns, both Pope Urban and St. Bonaventure could feel the tears begin to well up. And at that, Bonaventure turned aside, took the hymn he had written, and proceeded to rip it up. So that when it was his turn, Bonaventure humbly admitted, just use Thomas's. His were much better than anything I could have written. And those four hymns, 760 years later, are still used by us today in virtually every church throughout the world. Whenever we have adoration, no matter where we have it, we open it with O Salutaris Hostia, and we close with the final verse of Pange Lingua, Tantum Ergo. I'll never forget working with my choir up at SCI Huntington, where their kind of theme hymn was Adoro Te Devote that begins Godhead here in hiding and mentions their patron saint, Saint Dismas, as they call to ma call to pray the prayer made by the dying thief as they ask Jesus to remember me when you come into your kingdom. Those hymns from that feast day have been an active part of the life of our church for three quarters of a millennia. Think of it, that's three times as long as the United States has existed. And I like to think of that because it's good to know our history because when we realize those things and know our faith, we realize that when we're here and our, our world goes through plagues and famines and wars and everything else under the sun that the world can throw at it, everything under the sun the devil can throw at us, and we're still here. And we're still able to receive Jesus Christ, body, blood, soul, and divinity at the Mass. And when we can do that, we know that no matter what might come, we have Jesus Christ with us. And we have a church that has stood for 2,000 years. And this weekend, we're singing hymns that are three times as old as our country, 760 years old. And when we realize those realities, we realize we have a church that will stand no matter what the world throws at it, no matter what the devil throws at it, led by a Savior that we will come forward to receive on the altar this day. And as a people of faith, if we know that from the depth of our soul, then we have nothing to be afraid of. And we know Christ will be with us through whatever comes. Trusting that God does, standing together as God's people, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, Substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified in Pontius 
Pilate. He suffered death in his birth and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting that God does hear and answer our prayers, we present our needs and petitions to our Heavenly Father. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, that we may renew our gratitude to our Heavenly Father, who provides for our journey with the bread that is His own Son, we pray. For our priests, the ministers of Christ's new covenant, that the anointing which has sealed their souls forever may make them fervent and holy ministers of God's mysteries, we pray. Lord, For peace and justice, that we may share our bread with our hungry brothers and sisters in the same generous spirit that Jesus shares himself as bread with us, we pray. For all who bring Eucharist to the homebound and hospitalized, that they may be renewed through their service and be a support and a source of joy for those whom they serve, we pray. For the victims and survivors of sexual abuse, may the whole church community continue our commitment to safeguard our children and the vulnerable, we pray. For all who are sick in mind and body or spirit, that the Lord who loves us grant them strength and comfort, we pray. For all our departed loved ones, that the Master's repeated assurance that he will raise them to new life may become a living reality in heaven, we pray. For those intentions that we lift to him now in the quiet of our hearts, and we especially remember the proclaimed TV ministry, who is the intention of this Mass. And for the needs of God's people, we pray. Heavenly Father, gracious God, giver of all good gifts, continue to watch over us and answer our prayers as we ask this in all things through Christ our Lord. Amen. As the altar is prepared and the gifts are brought forward, please join in singing number 378, Ponje Lingua, number 378.
their brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant your church, O Lord, we pray the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery in the offerings we here present. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect praise, nourishing your faithful by this sacred mystery. You make them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out in without and we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, 
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Mark, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command of form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. A spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. As we approach the altar to receive our Lord present in the Holy Eucharist, please join in singing 792, God's Holy Gifts, number 792.
And let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share of your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who live and reign forever and ever. Please be attentive for the important parish information, including nominations are still being taken for the parish council, new information about our permanent deacons, and the new ministry schedule is live online and in the sacristy. Um, and one big announcement I have for all of you folks. Um, next, uh, Bishop has decided that next weekend will be our first weekend. We are getting a permanent deacon here. Um, so Deacon Rick Messina, who was just ordained uh, last, last week, uh, will be joining us next weekend. Uh, so we'll welcome Deacon Rick here next weekend. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. As we are sent forth, please join in singing number 841, Beautiful Savior, 841. <laughs> 